Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage where we take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Sean. I'm Tennille. And today we are looking at Filmation's third film, Oliver Twist. Third? What was the first? They also made that bad Return to Oz film. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it wasn't part of, like, this set of, like, yeah, 20 yeah. films that they're planning on making. Tennille, I can't take more of these. Well, lucky for us, the deal with Warner Brothers was cut off after this film. I wonder why. And Warner Brothers stopped distributing Filmation's movies after this. So, this We're is an about... adaptation of <laughs> Oliver Twist. Charles Dickens' novel serialization um, from the 1800s. How does Filmation handle the source material? I don't know. You want to know why? Because I've never read the original source material, but I have a feeling that they were too accurate. <laughs> yes. Um, I have also never read Oliver Twist. Or Oliver Twist. I have read... Uh, some of other Dickens' works. I've read A Christmas Carol. I've read Great Expectations. I might have been forced to read one of his other books or some of his other shorter stories. I don't, I'm not someone who hates Dickens, but I have a really hard time reading him because he pads things out a lot because really? he wrote serialized stuff, you know? So, like, the more he could write, the better he you know, like, the longer he had a job. You know, so, like... You know, and this really... was his second novel. You know, mm -hmm. I had a sudden realization that Filmation, specifically doing this movie, is, is so fitting. Pretty fitting. Because that's all they do. Just pad things out. They pad things forever and throw in random bullshit just to make it go longer. Mm-hmm. Like, run cycles that just continue going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, anyway, though. Did we say the movie, the name of the movie? Oliver Twist, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. We're in 1974. Mm-hmm. Oh. I have thoughts. You have many thoughts. Uh, should can, we can start? I, can, can I? Do you, do you, okay, start with your summary, and then I have feelings to get out. Yes. So please, please, tell us the summary of Oliver Twist for anyone who is not familiar with this story. This is going to be super hella abridged, okay? Mm -hmm. Oliver Twist is an orphan. He grows up in a miserable life where he's forced to have like little money and stuff like that and he's shoved around to various jobs by evil, greedy, rich people. Uh, he runs away to London, where he becomes a like a pickpocket. He's Please, really. Lisa, can I have some more? Ugh. Uh, turns out he's really bad at being a pickpocket, and he's picked up by a kindly older rich gentleman who takes him in and teaches him how to read and makes his life happy. Spoilers, he gets picked up by the thieves again who try to kill him off for money and stuff. But don't worry, because it turns out that he's actually secretly rich. And the po secretly nobility, secret nobility, or something like that. And his evil stepbrother is trying to kill him off to get him out of the will. And uh, the the only person that's vaguely nice to him that isn't rich gets killed. She gets killed off by her terrible, terrible bully boyfriend or something. And then he gets the the evil, terrible bully boyfriend ha accidentally hangs himself. And the movie ends with the main character going off to live a rich life and never think about being poor again. This movie has an interesting relationship with class. Yeah! To say the least. Uh-huh. Can we go back to watching Russian films where the <laughs> poor people are the good guys? Yeah, I know, right? I much prefer that. Oh my god. Yeah, so... I... After watching this film, just to make sure that, you know, I kind of knew what I was talking about, I did read a synopsis of the book. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't have time to read all 52 chapters of Oliver Twist and, <laughs> uh, for this podcast. But I did read a synopsis of the book, and this movie is pretty faithful to the book. 
Uh, that does not surprise me at all with Filmation. Yeah, it... Uh, okay, you know what? I'm just going to read. I'm going to read my thoughts, and then we're going to go off from there, okay? All right, sounds good. You have a lot. I do. I wrote a lot about this film. This is an ugly movie for an ugly story. I'm not super familiar with the OG material here, but I have read of some, some of other Dickens' works, um, and I can acknowledge that this seems like a fairly faithful adaptation. I did look up later what the book is about, and mm -hmm. it is. This movie is marketed towards children, but is way outside comprehension for them. Not in a, kids are too stupid to get this kind of way, but in a, this film doesn't take the proper care to make this relatable at all. And it trivializes its plot to try to bridge that gap, but then still includes story beats like Nancy getting murdered by her abusive boyfriend. It also keeps the message of the book that poor people deserve to be poor, which is just horrible, sloppy work. This, and this has been a note... This is and has been a known problem of this story. The least you can do is try and write it out. I expected to be bored here, but I'm actually just completely taken aback by every decision to make this a faithful adaptation of the book. I just think this film is highly irresponsible and sloppily made, and had it treated its subject matter better and had just been put a little bit more effort into it, this could have been a decent adaptation made for a general audience with a niche cult following. As it is, though, it manages to just be a waste of time and resources and is too juvenile to be enjoyed by anyone over the age of the titular character and should not be shown to children due to its sloppy morals, not that they'd want to watch it anyway. Yep. Yep. Filmation, of course, does the usual thing where they add random animal characters because Disney does that and therefore it must work, right? There is a slew of animal characters who do absolutely nothing. Except pad the movie. Yeah, the only animal character that I know of that is actually in the book is the dog Bullseye. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, the dog that likes being abused. Yeah. According to this movie. Yeah. This dog likes getting kicked. Mm hmm. That's how the guy kills himself by trying to kick the dog, slips, falls off, and hangs himself. Which, by the way, that is part of the book, too. Of it course. It happens in, like, slightly different events lead up to that point. He's not, like, chased around the city by a mob or whatever. But he does accidentally hang himself. And the dog is supposed to be symbolic of his, like, guilt or whatever. His guilt is chasing him. Yeah, the, the guilt of, like, killing Nancy or whatever. Ugh. Uh, Oh my god, this is just so sloppy. It, it sucks. Um, anyway, this movie was directed by Hal Sutherland, who directed the other Filmation movies we've watched so far. Um, Warner Brothers released this movie to theaters and then almost immediately pulled it from theaters after it started to review poorly and was only later aired on television in the 80s, but it was edited down to a 47 minute version of the film. This movie was an hour and a half. Yeah. An hour and a half. And they cut nearly half of it to air it on TV. Oh my God. Um, I mean, with commercials, it was still an hour and a half, I'm sure. It did lead me to wonder, like, well, why did they adapt Oliver Twist to begin with? Because this seems like such a... The, the thing is, is normally I, I am of the, of the position where it's like, kids can handle almost anything so long as you tell it in a good way. That's the problem, though, with this movie. They didn't they, tell it in a good way. They did not tell it in a good way. The, the setting of this film is, even by the 70s, over a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. Kids in the, in the 1970s are not going to relate to the problems of kids in the 1870s if you don't properly contextualize it for them. And the only way they try and make it work for children is that they add stupid trivial shit like 
Oliver being scared of shadows in the dark, which is so not part of what is wrong with his life. Mm -hmm. That is just insulting to like a child's intelligence. Like a child can watch this film and realize that there is worse shit going on than him being scared of the dark. Yeah, maybe the fact that he has no food and yeah. is bullied by literally everyone in his life. Yeah. Like, you can tell this story to kids. Disney has an adaptation of Oliver Twist called Oliver and Company, and Disney went through great lengths to remove the problematic content and add its own problematic content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, like, make the story work so a child can understand it. Like, you have to do these things if you want to tell a story to a child in a way that they can understand it and grasp the morals. It's not that a kid can't see this material, it just has to be shown in a way that they can actually process and relate to. And make it interesting for them to like want to think about what is going on in the story. There's nothing here that I want to think about. Nope. It's bad. It's just... I, of course, the animation is just as lackluster, maybe slightly better than their last film. Maybe. I don't know. It's difficult to tell. They probably made this one in just as little time. Mm -hmm. The art direction is so ugly, and it's... I would almost say it's purposeful for the film, because, you know, it's a ugly kind of story, but, like, it's filmation, and I don't want to give them that much credit. Mm-hmm. Um... I was saying earlier why I was like, I wondered why they would do all of her twists to begin with. Of course, they were doing stories that recently went into public domain, this being one of them. But also, you know, not even a decade earlier, there was a very successful musical that landed on Broadway called Oliver. Oh. And one of the actors, Davy Jones, reprises his role as uh, the Artful Dodger from the musical in this movie. So I guess that's neat. Well, good for him. He was barely a character in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That, that's pretty much it. That's, that sums it up. Cool. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. Again, like, we touched on it briefly, but this movie, or I guess the original source material, just kind of paints the picture that Rich people are inherently good and nice and wholesome, and poor people are evil, terrible, thieving, terrible people. Who deserve to be poor. Yes. Yeah. Because they're not good people. And that's the thing. Like, this is one of those problems with this story, that, like, people during the time that this book came out knew that this was a stupid bullshit problem of the story. That and the fact that the main villain, um, Fagin, is like a gigantic, horrible, awful Jewish stereotype. Is he? Yeah. I'm glad they took that part out. Yeah. He's, I th it, during my reading of the synopsis of the book, he's literally like not referred to by name for the first several chapters he's in. He's just called The Jew. Oh, great. Wow, thanks. I hate it. <laughs> anyway, though, yeah, that was Oliver Twist. Mm hmm Well, at least we get to move on from terrible adaptations. Wait, I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, I don't know if it's terrible, but we do have another adaptation. Uh-huh. Uh, what do we got? We have Jack and the Beanstalk. And it's by uh, Group TAC from Japan. Okay. So, I don't know. We've mostly enjoyed Japanese films more. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows? So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Goodbye, Filmation. I won't miss you. I mean, no. I know we'll see you more in the future, but, like, bye-bye. Goodbye to your films. <laughs> yeah. Woof. Anyway, see you all next time.